1 Corinthians, For I have received from the Lord what I handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and after you had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the chalice, after supper, saying, This chalice is a new covenant of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this chalice, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. spirit. Thank you all for coming this morning. Thank you all for watching our Mass on the YouTube. The day's Mass has been offered for Jack Suckman, and we're celebrating the Feast of St. Monica, the mother of St. Augustine. And she's a great woman of faith and perseverance and courage. So as we celebrate this wonderful woman of faith, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to, to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask of the Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Please bow your heads and pray in silence for Jack Suckman. <clears throat> O God, who consoled the sorrowful and who mercifully accepted the motherly tears of St. Monica for the conversion of her son Augustine, for the conversion, or sorry, grant us to the intercession of them both, they may bitterly, that we may bitterly reject our sins and find the grace of your pardon through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever. And death. Amen. <clears throat> We're glad our YouTube family could be with us today. Now let's open up our missalettes or our Bibles and listen to the Word of God. Corinthians chapter 1, 1 through 9. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Sosthenes, our brother, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to you who have been sanctified in Jesus Christ, called to be holy with all those everywhere who call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus that in him you were enriched in every way, with all discourse and all knowledge, as a testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Response with the song, number 145. I will praise your name forever, Lord. I will, I will praise, praise your name forever, Lord. Every day will I bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. I will, I will praise your name forever, Lord. Generation after generation praises your works and proclaims your might. They speak of the splendor of your glorious majesty and tell of your wondrous works. I will, I will praise your name forever, Lord. They discourse of the power of your terrible deeds 
and declare your greatness. They publish the fame of your abundant goodness and joyful sings of your justice. I will praise your name forever, Lord. Please stand. Alleluia, alleluia. Stay awake for you to not know when the Son of Man will come. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Stay awake, for you do not know on which day your Lord will come. Because of this, if the master of the house had known the hour of night when the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and not let his house be broken into. So too, you must be prepared. For at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. Who then is the faithful and prudent servant whom the Master has put in charge of his household to distribute to them their food at their proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his Master in his, on his arrival finds him doing so. Amen, I say to you, he will put him in charge of all his property. But if that wicked servant says to himself, my master is long delayed and begins to beat his fellow servants and eat and drink with drunkards. The servant's master will come on the servant's master will come on an unexpected day and at that unknown hour and will punish him severely and assign him a place with the hypocrites where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Today uh, I'm going to preach the Gospel from a patristic reading. The, I find these patristic readings in the Office of Readings, which is the official prayer of the Catholic Church, and the second reading <coughs> is always a patristic reading. In today's case it comes from that medieval bestseller called the Confessions of St. Augustine. St. Augustine was no saint, let me put it that way. But then he had a conversion experience and he writes his book as a personal dialogue with God of his experience of conversion. And today for the feast of St. Monica, the uh, church has chosen uh, to include a selection from the Confessions where St. Augustine discusses the illness of his mother and his spiritual conversation with her before her sickness. And this is what it says. Because the day when she was to leave, leave this life was drawing near, a day known to you, the you is God, Though we were ignorant of it, she and I happened to be alone, though, as I believe, through, as I believe, the mysterious workings of your will. We stood leaning against the window which looked out on the garden within the house that which, where we were staying at Ostia on the Tiber. For there, far from the crowds, we were recruiting our strength after the long journey in order to prepare ourselves for our voyage overseas. We were alone, conferring very intimately. Forgetting what lay in the past and stretching out to what was ahead, we inquired between ourselves in the light of present truth into what you are and what the eternal life of the saints would be like. For I has not seen nor ear heard, nor human heart conceived it, and yet with the mouth of our hearts wide open, we panted thirstily for the celestial streams of your fountain, the fount of life which is in you. This was the substance of our talk, though not the exact words. Yet you know, O oh Lord, how on that very day, amid this talk of ours that seemed to make the world with all its charm grow cheap, she said, For my part, my son, I no longer find pleasure in anything that this life holds. What am I doing here still, or why am I still here, I do not know, for worldly hope has withered away for me. One thing only there was for which I decided to linger in this life, to see you a Catholic Christian before I died, 
and my God has granted this to me more lavishly than I could have hoped, letting me see even you spurning earthly happiness to be his servant. What am I still doing here? What I replied, I cannot clearly remember, because just about that time, five days later, and not much more, she took to her bed with fever. One day, during her illness, she lapsed into unconsciousness, and for a short time was unaware of her surroundings. We all came running, but she quickly returned to her senses, and gazing at me and my brother, she, as we stood there, she asked in puzzlement, Where was I? We were be bewildered with grief, but she looked keenly at us and said, You are to bury your mother here. I was silent, holding back my tears, but my brother said something about his hope that she would not die far from home, but in her own country, for that would be a happier way. On hearing this, she looked anxious and her eyes rebuked him for thinking so. Then she turned her gaze from him to me and said, What silly talk. Shortly afterwards, addressing us both, he said, Lay this body anywhere and take no trouble over it. One thing only do I ask of you, that you remember me at the altar of the Lord wherever you may be. Having made her meaning clear to us with such words as she could muster, she felt silent, and the pain of the disease grew worse. So what we see, what we can glean from this uh, patristic reading is that, first of all, St. Monica had a radically different attitude about care of the body. Believe it or not, our funeral practices are almost identical to the Romans. There was a eulogy. There was a dinner after the burial, there was um, a procession. All, all these things are uh, actually copied pretty much from the Romans. There, were, there was music, you had to pay a flutist, and so on and so forth. Um, and the other thing is that the Christian belief about death and life after that changed the whole approach uh, the pagan Romans believed that you had to bring food to the dead to keep them going in the afterlife. And even very ornate uh, sarcophagi had um, actually holes through which you could pour your lavations into the casket where the dead person was. Interesting. Um, and of course the caskets were very ornate and they are found on the internet. You can see pictures of them. And the, the thing that strikes me is the ability of San Monica to have a spiritual cons conversation with her son, who was not yet a priest, by the way. He had just been converted. They were coming down from Milan because his job was to be the uh, orator, if you will, for the imperial court, which by that time in the 380s was at Milan. And they were coming home to they were coming to Rome in order to catch a ship and go to North Africa, where they lived. And that's why St. Uh, Saint, uh, Augustine's brother is telling, him, uh, is telling her that it would be far better if she were to die in her own country, in Libya, essentially. So, uh, an example of faith and an example of perseverance in prayer. Amen. Let us now stand and present our prayers to the faithful. We pray for Jack Sutman, for whom the Mass has been offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the faithful departed. May they enjoy perfect happiness and total fulfillment in the life of heaven with St. Monica and St. Augustine. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We have so many sick people. We pray for Pat Cuevas, for Becky Ross, for uh, Jeanette's son, Len, for... Um, Reese Benz, uh, uh, for the many people, uh, Gail Weemers, who is in the hospital in New Orleans, may God grant, the, uh, grant them good health and a speedy recovery. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the people dealing with the coronavirus, may we find a cure for it soon. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the people battling cancer and other catastrophic illnesses, we pray to the Lord. For all mothers as they pray for their children to find themselves and to follow Jesus the way, the truth, and the life, may they be inspired by the example of St. Monica and never lose hope, we pray to the Lord. We thank God for this day and all its opportunities. We ask God to answer all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and of all his holy church. We bring you these sacrificial gifts, O Lord, to commemorate Blessed Monica, humbly entreating that they may bestow on us both pardon and salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, the creator of the world and source of all life, for you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence or even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel to the desert. Now as your church makes a pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when it's once for his disciples and now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led to his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and granted by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and unto the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope, Louis our Bishop, with all the bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, 
that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Apostles and Martyr, with Saint Monica, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and power and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternity. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the working of this divine sacrament enlighten and inflame us, Almighty God, on the feast day of Blessed Monica, that we may be ever fervent in, with holy desires and abound in good works through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated now for Katie Hothart. constantly be preparing our hearts for the Lord's second coming. The time of his coming is uncertain, yet we must expect the event. The Lord has already equipped each of our hearts with a desire for him. It is simply a matter of remaining faithful and steering clear of obstacles that may distract us from giving Jesus our full attention. In the first reading, St. Paul is writing to the city of Corinth. At the time, Corinth was one of the wealthiest cities in the area. False worship, greed, and immoral practices controlled the Corinthians, separating them from the Lord. There was a constant battle between wanting to follow Jesus and being unwilling to separate themselves from the corrupt lifestyle surrounding them. The reading today is the opening of 1 Corinthians, led with Paul introducing himself and giving thanks for the city of Corinth. Paul is reminding the Corinthians that they are called to a life of grace and fruitfulness in the Lord. They are not called to a life of mediocre worship. They are called to fully participate in the salvation of the world. God has already equipped them with all the gifts and knowledge to live out a full life. Through Paul, God has given the young church of Corinth all means to worship him and convert their lives to him. Paul expects the city, the city to use these gifts to prepare their hearts for the Lord. The Gospels today states, Stay awake, for you do not know when the Son of Man will come. 
How many times do you find yourself going through the motions of prayer, mass, and everyday life? I know I constantly find myself going through these battles. Even though I am physically present, my heart and mind are not present with the Lord. Like the Psalms recite, we can praise the Lord for all generations, recognizing His glory, yet we can still be asleep at times in our faith. Throughout the Bible, the Lord is constantly reminding us to awake and be on guard in our lives. When we become stagnant in our prayer life or find ourselves going through the motions of prayer, we allow the devil to invade our hearts. When the servant sleeps, the thief comes into the house. When the master is not looking, the servant falls short of his duties. It is in these shortcomings that the devil leads us into complacency. When we become too comfortable in our everyday lives, we lose sight of the Lord's desire for us. If we are not actively learning, searching, and finding new ways to embrace our Lord, we cannot continue to grow in our faith. When the Lord says to stay awake, he reminds us that even the good fall asleep. Even Jesus' own apostles couldn't stay awake while he prayed in the Garden of Eden. When we are imperfect beings, striving to remain faithful in the Lord. Just like the Corinthians in the first reading, God is constantly calling us to a life with him, even amongst our shortcomings. Today, I challenge you to find what is distracting you from fully opening your heart and life to Jesus. For example, are you having a hard time understanding the theology or lacking in knowing the biblical teachings? You know Father Patty has always telling us Catholics to read our Bible more. Read a good book by Scott Hahn or Matthew Kelly or watch one of Father Patty's YouTube priests. Are you having trouble trusting in God to handle the challenges in your life? Pray with the divine mercy image, Jesus, I trust in you. Or pray your rosary and trust that Mary is interceding in your life. By acknowledging and recognizing our own limitations, we can stay awake in our faith. With the, when the unexpected time does come to meet the Lord, we can embrace the Lord knowing that we have dedicated our lives to praying our hearts to meeting Him. Thanks. Very good, Katie. Love to see the young people get up and share their faith. Excellent. Thank you very much. Got a cute email here. Ada just started his own firm and leased a new office. On the first day, he sees a man coming into the outer office and wishing to look like a big shot, picks up the phone and pretends he's in the middle of a huge business deal. After a few minutes of animated conversation, Ed concludes his business, puts down the receiver and turns to the man. Can I help you, I said. Yeah, replies the man. I'm here to connect your phone. <laughs> Anyone not get that joke? The Lord be with you. And, with you, and the Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be God. Let us pray the prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Come Holy Spirit, to the hearts of your faithful, and give us the fire and the blood. Say for the Spirit, and we shall be the and you shall be the face of the Spirit. Let us pray, O God, by the light of the Holy Spirit, destruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit, we may be truly wise in your great voice in this country. And be safe with the hurricane.